Hello everyone, Chris Tisdale here again. Thanks for tuning in. In this presentation, I wanted to share with you some forthcoming research. Now, this is mathematical research and it's also educational research. So this is designed for teachers, for students, anybody who has a basic understanding of second order linear differential equations. So I hope you enjoy it. Okay, the title of the talk is Improved Pedagogy, Learning and Teaching, for Linear Differential Equations by Reconsidering How We Measure the Size of Solutions. Okay, now a long title, but the concepts are really quite simple. Now this is, uh, by the way, this is new research that will appear in um, the International Journal of Mathematics, uh, Mathematical Education in Science and Technology. And I'll put a, a link in the description. Okay. All right. Um, so here's the abstract. And the idea basically is just to simplify existing approaches. Okay, and we're going to use a different way of measuring the the size of a solution. Okay, now I'm, I've called it the uber size just because it's kind of modern, um, but you can also refer to it as the taxi cab or the Manhattan side, size. So a priori bounds, they're just essentially estimates on solutions when you don't actually know explicitly the solution. Okay, hello to Luthando on the live chat. Okay, so we're going to obtain these bounds by kind of reconsidering how we measure the size of a solution. Okay. And we're going to use a special way called the uber size. All right, now this is very, very basic. If you want the more general um, nth order problem, you can go to the paper and and find it, find it out. All right. So here I've just concentrated on the basic second order case with constant coefficients. So here a naught a one are constants. B0 and B1 are constants, and T0 is some real number. Okay? Now, in the paper, A1 and A0 could be functions, and it could be third order, fourth order, fifth order, nth order, that sort of stuff. But just for simplicity, this is the kind of um, equation we're going to restrict our attention to. Okay. So, here is the main discussion point in this uh oh, oh actually before we do that i should probably point out that the dash here is just the regular derivative yeah dx dt just so ordinary derivatives okay so this is our main theorem this of course is a second order initial value problem what does this theorem say Okay, well, consider the problem, the IVP, initial value problem, one, two. Define constants big A and big B to be these quantities. Now, big A is just defined here for convenience, so we'll see why, why we do that later. And um, for all solutions, x of t, there are these inequalities, these sort of a priori bounds here where x is bounded by this kind of exponential function and the derivative x prime is is bounded by the same exponential function so we can kind of conclude there that all solutions to this problem are exponentially bounded in some sense okay all right so how do we come up with these bounds well i am glad you asked let me um unpack that a little bit more all right, well, let's start off using the fundamental theorem of calculus. So we assume that we have a solution x on the whole real line. 
let's write x and x prime in terms of an integral. Okay, well we know that x, the fundamental theorem of calculus, or the FTC, tells us x can be written this way, and similarly, x dash or x prime can be written this way. Alright, well, if we employ then the initial conditions from equation 2, we can replace this with b0 and this with b1. Alright, so we're going to do something with these two integral expressions now. So let's work on the, on the first one. I'm going to take the absolute value of both sides and then form an inequality. Alright, so for each point T, we can take the absolute value, then use the triangle inequality to break it down like this and form this inequality. And you can see that this this, in, this um, integrand is less than this. Now that's again just for convenience. So we have this is less than or equal to this plus this. It's a bit messy, but we're going to get somewhere with it. So just stay with me. All right, so similarly, we can now work with the x prime integral equation in exactly the same way. Okay, so very similarly, again, by using the triangle inequality, we can do exactly the same thing. Now, th there is one difference here. What we've done is replace this with the, the um, using the differential equation. Okay, so basically x double prime, you can re rearrange equation one and put these things on the other side and then replace x double prime with that because remember, x is a solution to, to one, two. All right, so we do that, form an inequality again, and in the, because in the nice way that we define big A, we can form this inequality here. So we have two inequalities on x and x prime. Oh, let me put that down a bit there. Okay, so we're going to add these two inequalities, both sides of them. Okay, so... We'll add them to form this. Now, because of the way that I've um, defined big B and, and big A, these things compress nicely. So you get this sum is less than or equal to this thing over here. Okay, so what is this uber metric about? What, what is the uber size or the uber way of measuring things? Well, it's kind of this and this, all right? So, I'm going to let v be this new function that basically just looks at the absolute values of these functions and adds them together. So, this is kind of the uber size. All right. Now, for each, so for each t, you'll get like a real number here. So, what do we have in 8? Well, we can now replace this by v and this by v. So we get this expression down here, which is an integral inequality. Okay, it's an integral, integral inequality. Okay, now from nine, you can show that actually v satisfies this exponential bound. Okay, and if, and if that's the case, because V is this plus this, each of these guys have, have got to satisfy the same bound. Okay, so that's kind of how it works. That's kind of where we're going here. So how do we go from 9 to 10? Well, it's well known. The proof is very well known, but let me just um, show it to you. Okay. All right. So we're only going to prove one case. I'm not going to do the whole thing. The case when t is greater than t0. Okay. So in the case when t is greater than t0, the absolute value signs disappear. And you get something like this. Oh, sorry, you sorry, the, the absolute value signs disappear here. And what we're going to do, we're going to let r be a new function that's just that right hand side with no absolute values. All right, so if you um, see then that under this definition of R, B 
because 9 holds, V has got to be less than or equal to R. And if I put T equals T naught in here, this disappears and R of T naught is B. All right. If I use the fundamental theorem of calculus here, I differentiate, I get A times V. And because V is less than R and A is positive, I get a differential inequality in R. Now you can solve this just like you would solve a regular basic linear differential equation. Okay, so you multiply by an integrating factor and you compress everything down to the derivative of some special product. Okay, so what you can do now is integrate both sides, again applying the fundamental theorem of calculus and solve. Okay, so you know in first year mathematics this would be an equal sign, but it doesn't matter with the inequality. The, the process is essentially the same. So you integrate both sides, you apply the fundamental theorem of, of calculus in this initial condition, and then you get this in, uh, inequality. Okay, so where are we now? Well, Remember, R is greater than or equal to V. So if R satisfies this inequality, V's got to satisfy the inequality, and therefore X, absolute X and absolute X prime has to satisfy the same inequality. Okay? All right. Now, that's all I'm really going to present to you today. We've, we've got the main theorem. Let me just see if I can, if I can find it. So we started with this. Our main theorem was this. And we, and we essentially introduced this new uber metric or uber size to get what we wanted through this, this integral inequality. Now, if you want more general cases, you can go to the paper and find them. So, for example, you can have an nth order problem here. So, third, fourth, fifth, etc. The coefficients, the a1s and the a noughts, etc., can be functions. Again, that's in the paper. All right. So, these are all kind of generalizations that you can go and explore and see in the paper, which I'll put the link to the, the paper in the, in the description. Okay, so here is the full title of the new piece of work. It's come out today, so I hope you enjoy it. And um, hello, Matthias, the Uber DE. Yes, I love it. I love it. Um, just a play on words. So um, thanks for watching, everyone, and hope you enjoyed this presentation. Go download the paper and see you soon. Bye.